Hi out there in football land again. It's your girl, Sonya Anderson, and welcome to another edition of All Things Football from a Lady's Perspective. Please do me the pleasure and go ahead and subscribe if you have not already done so, so that you too can be in the know when breaking news happens in the world of the NFL. You know that is all year long. we got a lot of things to talk about on today, February the 11th, 2018, so let's get started. First and foremost, I wanted to continue my Super Bowl post-show. Um, I had so much to talk about last week that I needed to break this edition up into two segments. So this is part two, so if you have not already done so, please go back and watch last week's edition so that you can find out what I talked about in the first segment so that you will be able to follow for the second segment. Thank you so much for tuning in. And gents, if you're tuning in, please share this station with all the ladies in your life who love football. And we're not just a one-team show. We're everything. And this channel focuses on faith, fitness, and football. So thank you again for tuning in. First things first, let's talk about that Super Bowl performance that Justin Timberlake performed. Now, apparently, prior to the show, there were a lot of talks about what type of ode to Prince would be performed because, as we know, Prince is from Minneapolis, and a lot of people were thinking that there were going to be a um, little, you know, what's the word? Yeah, you got it. Like a little ode to Prince. However, Justin Timberlake has stated that something tasteful will be done, but nothing too fancy, nothing too, you know, out there. Now, Prince was Jehovah's Witness, and he was against holograms. He spoke of them um, in several instances in um, death, talking about that he felt like they were demonic and that they were a way of trying to bring the person back to life, and he was totally against that. Now, prior to the show, there was some chatter on Twitter between Justin Timberlake and Sheila E., stating that talks of a possible hologram were actually in the works. And so she you reached out to Justin Timberlake, who stated, no, there's no way there is a hologram, blah, blah, blah. Well, when the show aired, not only did Justin not do a great perform performance for Prince, but there was a backdrop of Prince videos playing in the background, which to them seemed like it was close to a hologram. Now, the talk is that fans are demanding apologies from JT, that they're stating that the performance was mediocre at best, and that it was disrespectful to use Prince's facial little things, little performances, little videos without permission. But JT is standing by that he got permission, and he was only doing his job, and he doesn't know what he should be apologizing for. So we will stay tuned for that, but I will let you know me personally, I did not enjoy the halftime show. I did feel like it was like a flashback of Justin Timberlake and a very poor rendition for a tribute to Prince. So we'll stay tuned on that front and let you know what's going on with that next. Now, other articles from the Super Bowl fallout include a little um, shots fired from New Orleans. The Times Piscane, who basically stated... Um, on their front page, Birds of Play. It had a nice little portrait of one of our Eagles players, but in small caption underneath wrote, unlike you know, those Atlanta birds. So the shots are really fired. Other news articles had covers that said unpatriotic, basically symbolizing that the Pats were not patriotic after all. So everyone's had their little digs, and um, I think the most shocking part was that Philadelphia tore up your city like y'all won. Why are you tearing up your city? However, according to the press, there were more arrests in New England from looting and tearing up stuff than it was in Philadelphia. So I don't know what to think about it, but um, at least Minnesota is not torn up. So congrats again to the Eagles. Jason Kelsey had a heartfelt talk with the media about being doubted during the Eagles celebration parade this past week, basically saying F the media. So pretty hyped up, pretty good parade. Wish I could have been there just to celebrate the champs as they were. And in other Eagle news, Carson Wentz got engaged. So he now has a Super Bowl ring and his fiance has a ring. So double rings for the soon to be Mrs. Wentz and Mr. Wentz. Congratulations to you, Carson. 
Now, Bruno Mars, speaking of the Super Bowl, we're going to go ahead and fast forward it to 2019, Super Bowl 53, real quick, that you know is going to be held in the ATL. And I think everybody in the South is, is really hyped up about that, like way in advance. Um, Bruno Mars was quoted on Twitter as saying, at NFL, you have a great opportunity to celebrate an incredible hip-hop artist from Atlanta next year, referencing Super Bowl 2019, Super Bowl 53. Me personally, I think they're going to put T.I., Future, Usher, probably Jeezy. I mean, it could be really crunk. And I'm definitely looking forward to the halftime performance on that aspect because... They need to do some double making up. I don't see a female artist per se right now because, you know, Super Bowl tends to be more hyped up, but we'll stay tuned when they announce it. Now, another, another powerful story that I've been following was the death of Steve McNair. Now, Steve McNair is the former Tennessee Titans standout who was murdered on July 4th, 2009 by the woman he was allegedly having an affair with behind his wife, Michelle McNair's back. Now, Steve's birthday is coming up on Valentine's Day, and there is a very heartfelt interview that Michelle sits down with Elizabeth Merrill on ESPN Go. You can tune into that on ESPN.com, or you can tune in for the recap from this morning's edition at 9 a.m. Now, that's a very heartfelt story. In other news, we've got a lot of breaking news going on. There's been a lot of coaching switch-ups and offensive coordinator switch-ups and all kind of things. The Vikings have hired the Eagles quarterback coach as John DeFilippo as their new offensive coordinator. So he's now left from quarterback coach, and he's going to go on over to the Vikings for offensive coordinator. You want to go ahead and hurry up and get them a ring, too, because they see, you know, who's doing what. So congratulations, and we hope things work out well for you in Minnesota, Mr. DeFilippo. Now, in Niners news, the 49ers are making franchise deals with quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo, totaling $137.5 million. Now, general manager John Lynch didn't want to lose Garoppolo because he has turned that season around and turned it upward to a 5-0 start every time that he has started in that game. Now, his deal cements the largest annual salary deal in NFL history for a five-year deal. Prior to that deal, Matt Stafford, a.k.a. the gunslinger from Detroit, held the highest paid annual at $27 million. This puts Garoppolo over $27.5 million. Now, in October 2017, when Garoppolo took over, it, he left New England of all places. Remember? He stood in Brady's backup when Brady was out on those suspensions he was serving. He held his own. But when Brady came back, Garoppolo went to the back scenes behind stage. San Francisco snatched him right on up. So he's right at home, and now he's etched him a deal. Congratulations to you, JG. You're going to do the thing out there on the West Coast. Now, um, the Pats also remained in the number one AFC while he was there. So that's a lot to say. And Garoppolo has had seven years in the NFL. He ranks 67.3 percentage-wise in passes. And he's the fourth highest pass quarterback in the league. So congratulations to him. And originally, Belichick had you know, considered signing him for when Tom Brady retires. But we all know Tom Brady's going to stay there until he's 50. So... That's going to be no time soon. So Garoppolo had to go get his coins. He got signed somewhere else. Now let's talk about a little necessities here. The Dallas Cowboys. I haven't talked about them on this show. Dallas Cowboys are, you know, the combines coming up. Free agency. Into the drafts. You know, like I said, NFL news never stops. Dallas right now, their most dire need is in the linebacker position. They are having quite a little finagling going around here and it's pretty difficult because it's up in the air about their key component in the linebacker selection process which will consider whether or not the free agent Anthony Hitchens will stay or go with Dallas. Now if he leaves Dallas then of course Dallas will be definitely looking to go get linebackers of the top caliber from any team that's willing to switch off and give them some trades. But if he signs they're not going to be looking to pretty much cushion him and pretty much provide some depth to that team. Now, key for Dallas is also going to be whether or not 
All pro Sean Lee stays healthy, stays injury free, and Jalen Smith can get back to his old self back in his Notre Dame days before that knee injury. So we're going to be staying tuned for that. Now, Dallas management has stated that their main goal during this offseason is going to be keeping Hitchens. Hitchens was a fourth round pick in 2014, and he's out of Iowa, and he has started 48 out of 60 games that he started. So he's really good, and they want to keep him. Now, Nick Foles, back to a little bit of Eagles news here, is your Super Bowl champ and MVP. Nick Foles, the backup quarterback. And like I told y'all last week, only the 10th backup quarterback in NFL history to win the Super Bowl. Congrats again, Nick. Love you. Doing awesome. Now, now with the offseason going on, and I remember I told y'all, they said win or lose. They were looking to get Carson Wentz back where he's supposed to be. So Nick, he might be out of a job at some point. We don't want to see Carson getting injured back to back. Now let's look at some teams that may benefit for Nick Foles if he should decide to leave the Eagles next. Number one, Cleveland Browns. Okay, I get it, y'all. Every year, the Cleveland Browns pretty much draft them a quarterback. This is their second season that they are 0-16. and 16. Like, they didn't win nothing. I don't know if getting a new quarterback is going to make that big of a difference. Do y'all think it's going to make that big of a difference? Now, Cleveland does have a $7.6 million cap. And Foles is going to be cheaper than that if they can sign him. But he's going to be a little more busier than just a signal caller. Like, they need more players on the offense that he can play calls to. Not just him. <laughs> so, fresh off of that 16-game loss, 0-16, the Browns do have two of the first four picks in April's draft, and they also have three second-round picks. So, I don't think that's going to be a good fit for them, but if it is, they'll probably get fold some money kind of similar to what Washington gave up for Alex Smith. It kind of would be the only logical conclusion on that matter. Now, Denver Broncos, Von Miller said last week they were interested in Kirk Cousins from Washington, but Nick Foles could also be a good fit for them. Johnny Elway is not going to verbally, publicly admit that he made a mistake with drafting Paxton Lynch. I mean, like, what is Paxton doing? He was ranked really high. Denver got, like, one of the top drafts because Denver and Carolina both had busted seasons after their 2016 Super Bowl appearance. But Denver had another bad season and did not go to the playoffs, period. So, Paxton... Not sure what's going on, but they may be getting ready to move somebody in to supersede you and push you on back to the back. Now, Denver apparently is more interested in Kirk Cousins, like I said. And they even willing to give up a keep to leave, which, by the way, with that bad attitude, dude, you've been to like more, t I think he's been to all 32 teams, like, except for the Panthers. Dude, you've been everywhere, like, you're horrible. You are ridiculous. So, anyway, Denver's ready to get rid of your behind. And uh, they want to give him up and a pick just to get Alex Smith. But Alex is gone to Redskins. So, that leaves it up in the air that Nick Foles may be able to come to that's it, Denver Broncos. Now, if they did get Foles, then Elway would have to basically go ahead and push Paxton onto the back and be able to save face. But if they don't get him, they're going to have to admit that Paxton was a bust. Now, it wouldn't cost Denver their first round pick to get Nick Foles, but it would surely upgrade over the other three quarterbacks that they already have. Next team, Buffalo Bills. Okay. <sighs> Granted, the Bills did make the playoffs. Congratulations. They have like four former Panthers up there. Congratulations. I think that was their first playoff appearance in 
what, 17 years? Congratulations, but they got eliminated like immediately. Tyrod Taylor, what are you doing? Everybody was so hyped up. But again, guys, I tell you, your quarterback is only as good as your O-line. So if your O-line is not the best, it doesn't matter who you get up there. They're not going to be the best. Now, Tyrod Taylor's era, hmm, dissipating, not as hype as it was, just slowly dwindling down. Now, Sean McDermott is willing to rely on Nathan Peterman for next season, then Buffalo will be looking to add a quarterback, which means, again, Nick Foles. But Nick, do you really want to come in as a backup for another team or just stay where you are? Like, Nick Foles, if you're going to stay in the league, you need to come in as the quarterback. No questions asked. But remember what y'all were reading and hearing before we talked about this. Nick had already said, you know, he's on the high. This is his high. High was to ride up out of here if he wants to. He was going to seminary school. So that's one of those things we got to kind of watch and see how it goes. But next team we're going to look at. Philadelphia Eagles, could he be just staying with the Eagles and being there in case Carson's not ready to start the 2018 season? Now, it's questionable that Carson may not be ready to start spring training. There you go, Nick. You already ready? Uh, preseason? He may not be ready. A report over the weekend stated that uh, um, excuse me, that Wentz has suffered a torn LCL in addition to tearing that ACL back in week 14. Now, that could delay a return to the field. Now, this is an, an injury that was not disclosed originally. Like I said, this is not gospel, but it was told this weekend through Bleacher Report that Carson had an LCL injury in addition to that ACL injury. And trust me, Suffering from foot injuries of any type, any little second component of that will delay your injury. Trust me, sitting here with my foot propped up right now on ice. Now, everybody would think winning the Super Bowl would be like pretty much the most huge thing for the Eagles, but it also is going to have some ramifications in the offseason. Will Foles really want to come back to the Eagles? as a backup when Carson comes back. Like, dude, he's the MVP. Like, it's like extinguishing his fire. Like, okay, been there, done that, have a seat. You're done, Nick. We're, we're done with you, thank you. Like, that's how it's really gonna be, though. Now, I told y'all, he's not gonna wanna stay behind the scenes, or is he okay with that? Now, in reality, the Eagles can offer up a raise to him, monetary, you know, with the hopes that he will be okay returning to the team as backup. That's just it. It's a long shot, but it's going to be dependent upon if Carson's going to be ready to return for the season or not. So we'll stay tuned on that one. Now, I'm going to have a little personal moment here just because y'all know I'm a Panthers fan. Allegedly, which is really not true. Y'all can feel free to drop your little uh, videos in the comments. When my Panthers went to the 2016 Super Bowl, it was alleged that Cam did not shake Peyton Manning's hand. Uh, yes, he did, and he hugged him. But apparently, social media captured that Tom Brady did not shake Nick Foles' hand, ran on into the locker room, but his wife, Giselle, congratulated like every Eagles player out there. Social media only made that one comment, did not rip Tom the Goat Brady in half to shreds, but let it be Cam, oh, he is murdered. So that was just my little dig for this week because it's been noted on several outlets. And I want to let y'all know that she shows sportsmanship, Giselle that is, on a night 
when some of the Patriots, who just knew they were going to win the Super Bowl, had a problem doing the same. Speaking of Patriots and messiness, Josh McDaniels. Been waiting to tell y'all this story all week. I had to get more stories together so we could have a good show. Really, Josh? You have been telling the Colts since Christmas, basically, that you were going to come and coach them in the absence of Chuck Pagano, who was terminated, let go, whatever. You told the Colts that you were going to come and coach them as head coach once the Patriots season was over with. And you have, as Tony Dungy noted on Twitter, other offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, linemen, quarterback coaches from all over other teams in the nation quit their jobs, get hired on with Indianapolis because they're thinking they're going to be working with you. You accept the position at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And at 7.30, you are rescinding your offer? Okay, who does that? And that's what Tony Dungy said. Like, Dude, you got people quitting their jobs just to work with you. And you abandoned them. Like, who does that? Tacky, tacky, tacky. <sighs> Apparently, he's going back as the New England Patriots offensive coordinator. According to Ian Rappenport from NFL Network, he's gone on back. So, I guess they think they can get it done again. Go back to the Super Bowl. I don't think they're coming out here in Atlanta for no Super Bowl. I'm just saying. Y'all not coming out here. Tom, Bill, none of y'all. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, NFL Network's Mike Garofalo on Tuesday said that McDaniel's decision was confirmed by the Colts. Now, after agreeing to those contract terms to become the Colts' new coach, New England Patriots assistant coach Josh McDaniels this evening, being Tuesday, informed us that he would not be joining our team. The Colts issued in a statement. Although we are surprised, in other words, shocked as all get out and disappointed, we will resume our head coaching search immediately and find the right fit to lead our team and organization on and off the field. Now, let me tell y'all who that is, because that was breaking news this evening. It's Mr. Reach, am I pronouncing that right? From the Eagles offensive coordinator is now the coach, head coach. What is his first name? I don't know, I keep tons of notes, like I always say. Well, I guess I didn't write it down because I already know who he is. <laughs> oh, Frank Reach. Yep, former Eagles offensive coordinator is now the head coach of the Colts as of 3.30 this afternoon. So congratulations and thank you, Ms. Reach, for keeping your word and good luck in Indiana. Now, let me tell y'all a little bit about how Mr. Reach got his job. It was a surprising development because the Colts had announced Tuesday morning being last Tuesday, February the 6th, that they had reached an agreement with McDaniels to become a new coach. And although he hadn't signed the contract, the team had scheduled his introductory news conference for Wednesday at Lucas Oil Stadium. And compounding that issue was that multiple assistant coaches, like I just told y'all, uh, let me tell you who they were, that were trying to be working with him, and he stood them up. So, former Cowboys linebackers coach Matt Eberflus, who was pegged as McDaniel's defensive coordinator, is among those that's already on the contract with Indianapolis, and possibly other coaches who were going to remain with the Colts because 
they wanted to work with him. Now, Ian Rappaport also added that McDaniels was offering coach jobs to prospective assistants as late as Tuesday before changing his mind about the job. So, really, you was going in hiring assistants, setting up your squad of coaches, and then you bail on them? One word. Now, McDaniels um, is basically going to still stay with the Patriots, and they are in getting his deal to basically stay with them. Now, he is considered to be one of the NFL top head coaching candidates heading into the offseason, and he had interviewed with the Colts twice. But they said Sunday evening, he told Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk he may stay. Looks like he was right. He decided to stay. All right, let's get into a little bit of my team's news. Carolina Panthers. I took a sip after that other move. One well known quarterback is among the group wondering if New Carolina Panthers offensive coordinator. North Turner will be a good fit with quarterback Cam Newton. Now, there's arguments for both sides of coins. Will North mesh with Cam? Will he not? Will they bump heads? Is Cam coachable? A lot of that stuff, as they say, we'll just have to see when the rubber meets the road as to how it all turns out. But for now, Kurt Warner, Hall of Famer, Went on NFL Network and said, Cam does well. Off play action, throwing the ball down the field. That's his greatest strength, as well as his accuracy on big throws. But the other side of it, Mr. Warner stated, was, Where you go? I've never really seen North in a situation where he's had to mold a game around a guy that's so athletic. Now, we know Cam is a Amazon. He is six foot five. He weighs like 240 some pounds. He's not your typical quarterback. He is a tsunami on feet. He can play, he can catch, he can run, he can pass. He's amazing, 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 amazing. So that's going to be the biggest problem is to see if North can work with all of that body that Cam gives everyone and will definitely give him. Cam is a zone reader. And he has the ability with that body to do a lot of crazy plays that often exceed quarterback power, option plays, stuff like that. So what's North's outfit going to look like? Mm, you just don't really know because North's career has kind of been like up and down. So in 26 years of North being either a head coach or offensive coordinator, he's overseen a top 10 scoring offense just 10 times and has not done so since 2011 with the San Diego, now Los Angeles Chargers. And only eight times has his offense finished in the top 10 in, in total yards. So not really seeing, he's worked with some good quarterbacks in the past, including Phillip Rivers, Aikman, and Teddy Bridgewater. But this may be one of his biggest challenges yet, uh, working with a unique athlete like Cam Newton. Now, the free agency is definitely starting to open up and people are starting to take note. Now, 2018 free agent target profiles for the Carolina Panthers continues with the Los Angeles Rams wide receiver, Sammy Watkins. Now, Sammy Watkins has some pros. He stands at six foot one, 211 pounds, and he's a star caliber receiver that has found success with two different teams and a multitude of quarterbacks. So those include Kyle Orton, E.G. E.J. Manuel, Tyrod Taylor, and most recently Jared Goff. Now, after a quiet start in the 2017 season with the Rams after being traded from Buffalo, Watkins caught a touchdown pass in six of the Rams' last eight regular season games. So he's pretty good. Now, another pro would be um, Detroit Lions defensive end Ezekiel Ziggy Ansah. Now the pros for him was he's well above average 
rusher, pass rusher, and has a proven track record of getting after the quarterback. He stands 6'6", six six, 271 pounds, and he's also about as close as it comes to matching the size and power of Julius Peppers. So whether JP decides to stay or leave will be crucial for Carolina to go ahead and zone in on this free agent. Now, let me talk about a little injury that may have been overlooked. Curtis Samuels, who is our rookie wideout receiver, suffered an injury last year, well, this past season, that um, didn't look as bad, but it seemed to be, at the conclusion of the matter, worse than what we initially thought or what we initially were told. Samuels got hurt while dropping a touchdown catch against the Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football in Week 10. Now, according to the Panthers writer, Max Hansen, team writer, Panther Max, he not only suffered a broken bone, but he also had ligament damage as well. Now, the team reporter, Bill Voth, soon followed up with a tweet stating that Samuel's targeted return is training camp. Now, we'll just have to stay tuned to see, because like I told y'all earlier, those foot injuries and breaks, you know the rest. Speaking of the Panthers, can we just stay drama free? Can we just go back to football and stay out of the limelight with the bad press, like seriously? So now, In the quest to seek a general manager, our nice little interim general manager has now been placed on paid leave after his ex-wife accused him of harassment. Harassing her, I guess, last week. Marty Herney is on paid leave with Carolina Panthers because she filed a complaint and stated that her classroom had been broken into, I'm assuming she's a teacher, that It was done by Marty Herney or his proxies, quote, and the sticky notes had been placed on a book in her home, highlighting certain words such as victim, terrorized, court of law, least prosperous, and may resort to violence. Now, later in that police report, she also mentioned that she felt her phone, laptop, and security system had been hacked by him or his, quote, proxies and she did not feel safe at home or at work. Now, according to Joseph Person of the Charlotte Observer, Herney's ex-wife who filed a report, her name is Jean Herney, also filed suit for restraining order on Friday, and it was denied by the judge. The judge who heard the arguments said there was no evidence that he had committed any of these acts of domestic violence against her, District Judge Ronald Chapman refused to issue an immediate restraining order against Marty Herney. But Chapman said a February 16th hearing on the complaint. So that's later this week. I'll be back with y'all on the next segment to update you all on that outcome. Now, back to the little issues at hand. The Panthers are looking for quite a few prospects. Now, they're also looking for Malcolm Butler. Zoning in on him. As you know, Belichick and him kind of bumped his. He didn't really play in the Super Bowl, all this stuff. So, he had an epic interception against the Seahawks in the Seahawks game in Super Bowl of past. But, let's see if he can still do what he's got to do best if the Panthers pick him up. Now, when the Patriots signed Stephen Gilmore last year in the offseason during the free agency, Butler settled in on the other side, racking up 50 tackles and two interceptions, playing all 16 games and starting 15. He would be an immediate upgrade for our struggling secondary. And lastly in Panthers news, I want to let you all know, welcome Chase Blackburn. He's a former player at the University of Akron and he's an undrafted rookie with the Carolina Panthers on their special team standout roster, and he's now the special teams coordinator. So congratulations to that. He has had eight years with the Giants as linebacker with his final two seasons being with the Panthers. Now, another story, Greg Olson, 
Walter Payton Man of the Year finalist for the first time only had 191 yards receiving this year because you know he missed nine weeks to that broken foot injury. After seeing three consecutive years of over a thousand yard receptors, he's the only tight end in NFL history to have over 1,000 yards receiving consecutively for three years, 2014, 15, and 16. So we're hoping Greg can get back to where he knows to get back to next season. Hopefully he'll be healed up. I'm with you, Greg. We got that same type injury the same week, so I'm with you. Now, Luke Keekley won, I forgot to tell you all last week, the 2017, he was a 2017 winner of the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award. So congratulations to him. And I wanted to tell y'all, speaking of that Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, J.J. Watt won that award for raising over $37 million for victims of Hurricane Harvey relief. So Texans stand out, J.J. Watt. I absolutely love that guy. He's awesome. Thank you for raising that money. And congratulations on a well-deserved award. Benjamin Watson also was a finalist for that award. So congrats to all three, but congrats to J.J. Watt. Now, I was going to tell y'all, but before I could even give you guys the interim GM candidates information, he got paid on, put up place on paid leave. But Martin um, Mayhew is also a GM candidate. He is a senior personnel exec for the 49ers. He gave great interviews as his focus would be on putting Cam back into place of dominance. Because, you know, Cam was the MVP for 2016 season, 15-16 season. And he knew that that status was important to Cam so that he felt that that was going to be his focus as well as bringing core team players in. Keekley Davis, Ryan Khalil, he would focus on bringing perimeters into the core. Um, so that was what was going to be racking up for that little tidbit. Now... In our closing segment, <sighs> today has been a very emotional day for me, personally. And I'm only sharing this because I know someone out there can benefit from this. Today, I learned someone extremely close to me is suffering from cancer. And I'm grateful that it was caught, that it can be treated successfully, and that this person can be restored to their normal health. But I wanted to share with you the importance of taking care of your health, staying on top of things, getting your checkups, which is something I need to stay on as well. We all too often have that fear of the unknown. We don't want to get checked out because we don't want to find out anything wrong with us because we feel fine. But it's not always the best thing to go off of is your feeling. Some things would just have to go off the facts. So I'm encouraging everyone out there, get your mammograms, get your prostate, prostate exams, get any type of scopes you need done to ensure that you are at your healthiest. Take your vitamins, take your supplements, try to avoid smoking, excessive alcohol, and as well, control substances, if at all possible, that are not prescribed to you. That's my faith moment for tonight. My faith is to encourage you to have faith in yourself, to know that God who made your body can also heal your body. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of All Things Football from a Lady's Perspective. Have a great week. God bless.